Hi everyone, Rebecca the Frugal Resinista here today um, with a brand new project. I will talk us through it real quick, but I will speed up a lot of the actual process so that I am respectful of your time. Um, and a lot of the things that I'm going to teach you today are um, techniques that I've used in previous tutorials. So if you have specific questions on what I'm doing, you can go back and watch those and I'll try to put the numbers in for those. Um, super excited. I was cleaning out my kitchen and found this giant silicone mat that um, was supposed to be for pie crust and I do not bake pies unless I am using store-bought crust. So this is not for resin. Um, I tested my glue gun on it already with a line. I'm using a low heat glue gun. So I am going to use my glue gun directly on this mat and then when everything's done, hopefully my freeform geode will just peel right off. I'm doing a slightly different shape than usual because I'm going to attempt um, a new kind of fun thing that I'll show you when we get to it. So we're going to get started. I'm going to make the outline of my geode in a slightly strange shape and you will see why as we get further into it. I'm also going to be using one of these um, molds that are usually for coasters. That's going to actually be part of our design as well. So here we go. down once. Now that I have tried this and I knew the glue would peel without damaging the mat, I'm not actually super confident in the ability of this thing to hold the resin because in a couple spots um, I had, you know, my lines of glue that always end up coming off as you're um, using the glue gun. And I actually peeled some of the glue itself right off the mat already. So I'm going to try to really quickly clean up all the extra glue from around the edges here and then I think what I'm going to do is um, add one more barrier along the inside with another line of glue and just see if I think that's going to stick down well enough because clearly I don't want to like waste all my um, resin and have it just pour everywhere. But we'll try and we'll see what happens. So I'm going to clean off the mat and then come back to you. Okay, I just cleaned off my um, extra stones for the most part, and when I did that, this whole side stayed pretty well. This part came right off. Um, so, gosh, I don't want to lose any of it. I'm going to still try to stick it down once, but if it doesn't work, we'll just have to go with a different plan entirely. <laughs> down and I've got my mat semi cleaned up here. I'm just going to show you what colors I'm using real quickly. Um, this is going to be some really pretty greens and things. So I am using Craft Smart, um, let's see, Lush Foliage and Americana Evergreen and Americana, let's see, Medium Green. And then I'm going to use an Apple Barrel White and a Craft uh, Craft Smart Deep Bronze. And then with some of these, I'm going to mix some alcohol ink. Um, these are Ranger brand, and this one is Lettuce. It's a green that I'm going to mix with a couple of these. I'm going to mix gold into my bronze, and I'm going to mix pearl into my white into my um, lighter greens. So um, just a quick thought with what I'm doing here, and you'll see how it all goes. Um, I have to do this pour in one layer because... Um, I need it to all be hardening at the same time. So that's why I'm using the alcohol ink on all of these because um, the once you get everything mixed and it sits a little bit, some of the paint tends to sink and the alcohol ink tends to rise. And I want this to have a 3D look 
um, even though I'm only pouring one layer, one thick layer, but just one layer. So um, that's why I'm doing the alcohol ink and the paint into the same cups. I also have um, my coaster available. Um, that's going to get just some of these same colors mixed in. And I'm going to do one strip, um, just a poured strip of resin that's going to start hardening as well. And um, I'll show you how I'm putting it all together when I'm done. So I'm going to mix all this up with the resin and then we'll get to pouring. All right, all my paints are ready and I am about to mix my two parts of resin. I just wanted to give you a couple tips real quick here. Um, all the paints that I had mentioned, I got for $2 or less either at Walmart or Michaels. Um, so that's a great money saving tip because you only need a tiny bit at a time. I also am using um, Stone Coat Countertops Quick Coat. So as soon as I mix these together, I only have up to like 15 minutes of working time at most. I am actually doing a little more than usual. I don't usually mix too much at a time because it dries fast. I'd rather mix and pour and mix and pour. But um, because I'm pouring in this, I'm pouring a strip on the side and I am pouring into my mold, I want the colors to stay consistent um, and I'll match each other. So I'm going to try to go as quick as I can and pour the whole thing all at once. Um, so I'm going to mix my resin, pour it in, and we'll start pouring. <laughs> So I've got everything poured. I'm going to hit it with the torch while I talk to you real quick. I had a really weird thing happen in this that I've never had happen before. And I don't know if you saw it in the video, but I was going around like picking out little bits of stuff. I think my um, pearl pigment powder like congealed or something. I'm getting these little bits of um, like hard flecks of stuff inside the resin. and. Um, it was only happening with the colors that I used the the pearl in, so I'm not sure if I didn't um, shake that enough or what. That was just kind of weird. Um, real quick, now that this is full, I um, wanted to remember to tell you guys I used um, less um, paint to resin because I want this to be a little more see-through than usual. Um, my darkest green is a little too see-through, but I was going to add stones anyway, so I think I'm going to kind of focus my stones into that dark green so that it's not quite too see-through. So let's do stones. I'm using a combination of more of the gold stones that I put on the edges, and then this um, clear vase filler that I got from Michaels for $4.99 and then with a 40% off coupon. Um, so the clear kind of takes on whatever color um, it's on top of, but it stays really shiny. So that's why I'm just going to add it kind of in this green so that I don't lose my green color. Um, also, I have this filled not quite full all the way to the dam I created. So um, now I'm going to be just conscious of how many stones I put in because I don't want to overfill. Although, as you guys 
um, heard at the beginning, I'm not 100% sure how well this barrier is going to hold. So I'm already kind of planning on if I need to, um, you know, go through and fix a few spots that are going to leak out, I'll do that. But um, I'm going to just fill this in in a couple spots and um, we'll go from there. Check it out. <laughs> I didn't use the last of my clear in time. It is super hot on the bottom. So that is what can happen. I guess I didn't 100% need it, but clear is done. All right, I'm gonna hit this with the torch one more time because it's just moving the tiniest bit more. Now the key to this for me is we're actually going to do the next step of this before this is fully cured. So I need to make sure that I come back um, within like an hour. I'm going to set myself an alarm because it's a snow day and the kids are home from school and I'm going to get distracted. <laughs> so um, I'll set myself an alarm and then um, I'll come back to this when it is not able to pour anymore but when it's still very uh, malleable. So I just want to give you guys a quick close up on this as it's drying before we move on to the next step. Um, I didn't love the edges right inside the gold because I was a little concerned with there not being enough resin and some of the glue showing. So I actually got out um, a really pretty dark dark green nail polish that I had that's got sparkles in it and just poured right along the edge. I think that finished the whole thing off really nicely. Um, and then I went ahead and I also um, put it in here that dark line and I really like it. Um, I wanted to tie it in with the other colors. So um, this is what it looks like so far. I'm really happy with these colors. I think it's pretty. And then um, just so you can see this little strip I did a few of the colors in. And then, oops, sorry about the glare with the lights there. That's what my disc looks like so far. So really happy with it so far and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, it's been a little while since I have done my pour, and I'm going to move on to the next step. Um, just a couple notes here. I had a little extra green, and um, I have these fun little molds that I um, just had sitting around that are silicone. When I have a lot of extra, because this is just green sparkles, um, I, I it's not enough for me to do another project with, but I don't want to waste it. I stick it in these, and then I give them to my daughter when they're done, and she's got, she calls them her jewels. So we've got a little sparkly green jewel drying there. Um, my disc is significantly hard. Now, one thing to remember is actually the thicker the resin is, the faster it hardens. So although um, this is the smallest, this is the one I'm kind of still waiting on. It's a little sticky still because um, it's the smallest and it's taking the longest. These are thicker. So this is um, the thickest and is the hardest so far. So what I'm going to do is um, start messing with this. A little bit. Let me get out some wax paper so I can take my disc out of the mold. Um, I'm sure if a lot of you follow other people on um, YouTube who are doing resin, you've all heard of Artists Till Death. They are amazing and I'm going to give them a quick shout out because um, I didn't honestly watched their entire tutorial, but I watched a portion of one of their tutorials where they were trying to mold a freeform geode into a different shape. And so that is my plan for today. I will stick a link to their um, channel in the description because they're just fabulous and everything they do is really cool. So you should definitely check them out. But um, I'm not quite sure what they ended up doing with their mold. I just saw that they talked about specifically when you use stone coat quick coat because it goes so quickly um, If you get it halfway through about that dry time, I'm still messing with times on it But if you get it roughly halfway through its two-hour cure time 
um, it's flexible. So I am going to try to bend this so that it is in a um, different shape when it hardens all the way. Now the one tricky thing is this needs to be bent. It's ready because it's getting hard, but this doesn't and they're on the same mat. Hadn't really thought of that, but um, it's not a huge deal. We'll leave it on the edge of the mat and then I can peel it off in a little bit. So this one is out. That is so pretty. I love how the colors turned out. Um, and as you can see though, if you, if you look, this is still really bendy. Um, that's exactly how I want it right now. I want this one to dry flat, so I'm going to set it off to the side, flat on my table on some wax paper so it doesn't stick. This is the same way right now. Um, I can touch it, if you can hear that, um, but I can definitely still mold it and I really want to mold it into a shape. So hopefully I don't bang the camera up around too much, but um, I'm going to try to do this so that you guys can see it. And then I just, we're going to mess with this last because it's just taking a little longer to dry and I wish I had stuck it on something else, but I didn't, so oh well. Alright, I'm going to jostle you guys a little bit on the camera. Okay, what I'm going to do is I want to turn this into a candle holder, but not a flat candle holder. So I want this to be able to sit upright with the disc right here holding the candle in place and this molded around it in a couple of ways. So I'm going to start, I want the hole to be my focal point. So I'm going to try to first prop up that part and have it um, going one direction. All right. So my goal is that if this is wavy like this, it will um, stand up on its own, like on a table or wherever you want to set it. So um, I don't want to mess with it too much. I've never tried this before, so if you guys have tips on good ways to do this or if you're like, oh my gosh, don't do it like that, yell at me. All right, I'm going to have that go that way and then I want this to wrap up and around because I want the candle holder part to sit right in here. This is how I'm going to let this dry and we will see what happens. It is three days later. It took um, my resin three days to harden to the point where it was not trying to change shape again. But this is so exciting. Look at this. Um, this is completely hard now. It barely moves. Um, if I push on it, and obviously I don't want to push on it too hard, but I am so happy with how this curve happened. Um, this is completely hard. It's going to be fabulous. So, I'll show you the edge, how much that curve, um, that, that bend. I put a little tape here because I noticed one little hole in my, um, uh, in my glass here. So, when I do my next pour of resin, I'm going to stick a little bit in there. So, I'm going to set this off to the side and show you guys what's next. Actually, let me do it like this. This is going to be a candle holder. It's going to sit up on a um, table or whatever, and it's going to have this little disc here attached to it. So I'm going to just embellish this so that it matches the edges of the um, actual geode, and then we will stick them together with resin. So let me get this out of the way. And um, I'm going to use my glue gun first and just put the glue around the edges and roll it into the same glass that I used for the edge of the geode itself. Once I do that, I'm going to glue these two together, but then I'm going to coat everything in resin um, so that it's not just glue holding it together, obviously. Now, one of the things that's so nice about stone coat countertops um, resin is that they are heat proof because they can be used in kitchens, so it's okay for me to use this with a candle. Um, so. I'm super excited about how this is turning out now that this has hardened. Um, took a lot longer than I thought, but it's going to be fabulous. So I will speed this up and show you guys what I'm doing, and we'll go from there. Now that I've done the edges, I'm going to do one more layer along the top just to give um, a tiny lip to this. Alright, um, I 
have to clean some of the glue off of this, obviously, because that glue stick gets everywhere. But um, I'm really happy with that. It's coated the edges. I'm going to go back and fill in a couple teeny spots um, real quick. But I don't know if you can see that there's a little lip on this now. And I think that'll just really tie the whole thing together and finish it off nicely. Next, I'm going to glue these together after I fill in these little gaps. And um, then we will have the whole thing set up and I will mix resin to stick it all together permanently. All right, this is all coated. I'm going to let the glue cool and I'm gonna pull off all these little bits of glue string and then I will mix some resin and finish this off. Oh, actually, I forgot I first have to stick these together here. Let me get the string off. All right, I'm going to see if I can do this at an angle where you guys can see it, but you're kind of looking straight down and I don't know the best way to do it other than just to do it. So um, I'm going to stick this part underneath this section here. Um, I purposely made this section a little shorter than the part down here so that when it's sitting up, um, it'll all be even. But um, uh, let me do my best. I, I want you guys to be able to see it, but I'm not quite sure how to have you see it um, without messing myself up a little here. So we'll make this part quick if it doesn't look good once I get done with it. What I'd like to do is angle this so that um, when you see it from the front, the gold edges are just kind of touching each other so that it all looks like it's kind of seamlessly blended together. But I also want to make sure, so right now I feel like I'm tipped. I want to make sure I've got this tipped correctly so that it's um, 90 degrees from the table and not tilting one way or the other. Trial and error. I've never done anything like this before. Get it figured out. Okay, that's really close. What I'm going to do is just add a tiny bit of glue in a couple spots and hold it in place while the glue gets, um, while the glue, glue cools and sticks. And then again, I'll go back over all this with resin to actually stick it down all the way. So I'm sorry you're not getting a very good view of this. I just, I'm not quite sure how to have you do that. I come into the back. Okay, and I'm gonna just stand here in your way for a second and hold this at the angle I want it to Want it to cool it. I think that just about does it. I'm gonna add a little more glue underneath. Make sure I've got it where I need it. You guys get to watch my trial and error here. <laughs> there we go. I will just leave it like that while I do the resin so that it's holding it up at the 90 degree angle I want it at. All right, I'm gonna mix my resin and then I will come back and we will finish this thing. All right, my resin is mixed and um, just a little quick tip for you guys. When I run out of my old resin, um, I still save it and I tip it at like a 45 degree angle, not 90 because I don't want to put everything into the lid. But every time I'm mixing tiny bits of resin, resin to finish this kind of thing, um, I use that so that I get absolutely everything out of these. And also, so if I use one of my full ones, Sometimes I tend to accidentally pour too much, and this will let me pour out just a tiny bit. So, let me set that down. And I'll also show you, the. Um, I have these Testers brand one-time use paintbrushes. And um, if you've seen some of my other videos, you know that I'll use uh, model airplane paint um, to finish off some things. This is that same brand. This is used with models a lot because that paint doesn't wash out of brushes very well. But this was only a dollar for this whole pack. So I, um, again, I'm sorry, I'm going to speed this up quick because I know you can't see really well at the angle I'm at. But I am going to first just use my um, stir stick to really get resin in those spots where I glued and connected these two pieces to each other. And then I'm going to paint resin over all of this um, gold edging that I just did. So we'll speed it up real quick because I know you can't see it well and then I will show you my finished product. <laughs> I 
one little spot on this edge. You might have already seen me mess with it a bit. But um, I just didn't like how the glue had connected. And so I'm trying to add just a teeny bit more resin to make sure that that is solid and that the glue is not going to wiggle around on me at all. Um, I think that is about it. I have to let all this dry all over again. Um, and I'm just scraping off a little extra. I don't want the resin to pour into the middle of this now that that is already such a pretty decorative um, section of that. So um, we're going to let this dry. And then I always go back and do just some minor touch-ups. I see just a couple spots that um, I want to make sure are nice like on my edges and stuff and then it'll be finished and I will show you guys the finished product. As always, you don't want to waste your resin. I've got another project sitting off to the side that I will finish um, my resin with and I will show you guys the finished project. Thank you for sticking with me on this. This was a big one um, and I appreciate you guys spending the time to watch my video. I cannot even tell you how, ex how excited I am about how this turned out. Um, I'll get you pictures in better light. It's still finishing hardening all the way, but there's my um, tray for my candle holder, or I was thinking it'd be cute to put a little succulent there too. Um, I'll take a couple pictures both ways um, just to show you, but here is the geode, all the different parts of it, how it curves around. Obviously I'm in my art space right now, so I've got a big mess behind it, but I am super excited about this one. I'm so excited this worked because this one <laughs> was a lot of work and it took forever so um, one more time on there because I think that turned out super pretty too so there it is I will get some photos of it when that last little bit is um, completely dry and um, thank you for watching as always please remember to like and subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more of what I'm creating and you can find me on Facebook and on Instagram as the frugal resinista <laughs>